In this video, we're going to look at uh, using JavaScript variables so that we can store data. And we're going to specifically look at string data. Um, understand what the string data type is, how we can concatenate strings, which is basically means to join strings together um, by adding them together, and what template strings are. Hopefully we can get to all of that in this video. I'm just going to continue on with my Hello World program here that we had and just add on to the JavaScript here. Um, Okay, so before we get these alerts, I'm actually going to delete these alerts here. And we're going to create a variable. And when we um, create a variable, it's basically just like a, a, a storage container for data. And we give it a name. So first we have to declare a variable. So we use the keyword let. And then we give uh, the variable name. Um, so let's use a... Uh, let's let's say we want a variable to keep track of the the name of the user, right? The name of the person on, on our website. So I'll have a, a variable called username. Um, and there's some rules with the va valid names for our variables. I mean, you're not allowed to have spaces, right? It gives me that little underline saying, "Hey, what's going on?" Um, you can do like underscores, but not hyphens. Um, underscores are okay. You can have numbers, username one, and username two, that's fine. You can start your variable with an, oh, maybe you're not allowed to start your variable with a number. Oh no, but the, I think the area is there for another. Well, anyway, you shouldn't start your variable with a number. I can't remember if you're not allowed to, or if you just shouldn't, um, as a convention, as a language kind of rule. But anyway, um, you can use lowercase and you can use uppercase, that's fine. Actually, sometimes uppercase is used if you have a, a long, um, variable that's like multi-word, right? Like for example, time of day, right? It's a multi-word variable. So at the each start of each new word, you start it with a capital, just to make it easier to read. But anyway, let's go with username. And if I just edit it here, um, I could actually sa save this. I don't know why it goes down to the next line when I save. Oh, and I forgot, I've got my color theme here as the light, I think. My students often say, we like the dark screen better for watching the videos. So here's the dark screen. Okay, so I save this, let username. If I go here to my program, now I just created a variable. There's no alert. I don't see anything. But I can actually type the variable name here and check what's inside of it. I don't need the semicolon, but you can. And, oh, username is not defined. Oh, that's disappointing. Uh, hold on. Why? Oh, I probably didn't refresh it. Oh, I'm not live. That's why. What happened? Oh, I had to, sorry, here we go. My, uh, my VS code had to restart. So the live server, this was the live server from the last one. And I thought it was still running. So anyway, here we go. We'll can click the go live or right click here. Open with live server. Come on. Here we go. Inspect. Go to our console, refresh. Okay, so again, we don't see anything, but now hopefully when I type username, awesome. I type in username and it shows it's undefined, which is totally reasonable. I said, hey, let there be a variable called username, but I didn't actually tell it to store anything yet. So what we normally do is after we declare the variable name, we do an equal sign. This equal sign is the assignment operator and we're gonna assign it a string. So just like we did alert hello world with quotations, whenever we, we put a word inside of quotation, that's considered a string data type, okay? So the username is gonna be Mr. B. So let's save this now. And now when I go back into here, my page has reloaded and I type username and username is storing the string Mr. B. And notice here it does the single quotes, that's fine. I could have made this single quote, single quotes as well, but they do have to match. You can't do a single quote and then a double quote. That doesn't work. They have to match. You can also do backticks. Um, to the left of the number one above the tab is a backtick. Okay, it's like a single quote, but it has that angle to it. That's totally fine too. You can do all of all three of those for strings. Username, Mr. V. Yay! And if I did something else here, let's change that to Mr. Veldkamp. Save that, go back to here. Username is now storing Mr. Vulcan. Okay, cool. So that's how we create a variable. 
let this variable, this is the assignment operator. It says, hey, this variable is going to store. I assign it this string, the string Mr. Vocab. Okay, now, now that I have a variable, I can do things like this. Um, well, first, let me show you that we can add strings together. So if I go high plus there, okay, this plus sign is an op it's an oper operator, right? Like in math, we add numbers together. But here we've got two strings, and when you do the addition, the plus sign on strings, it joins them together, okay? And that is called concatenation, right? If you join strings with addition. Um, and the reason that's important is because what I want to do now is I want to do an alert message and I'm going to alert hello and I'm going to add username. Okay, so username is a variable. It's storing a string. I'm going to take the string hello and add what's inside of my variable username, which is the string and it should join them together and it's going to alert that message. So let's save that. We go here and it says, hello, Mr. Valcamp. Awesome. Now notice there's no space in between because it literally just joins them together, right? Hello plus Mr. Valcamp. There's no space. So you actually have to put a space here. Okay, so hello space plus username. And now you can see it has that space there. Cool. And we can add more things. We could go username plus an exclamation mark at the end. Save that. Go back here. Hello, Mr. Velcap, and that exclamation mark. Cool. Okay, so string data types, variables. Now you're like, why are we doing this, right? Why, why have a variable? Why couldn't I just write hello, Mr. Velcap, with an exclamation mark as all one string? You absolutely could have, right? Hello, Mr. Vel, Velcap, exclamation mark. This would do the same thing as this, right? Why do this variable? Well, I'm not going to do it in this video, but we're going to modify this program where instead of just typing the string here, we're going to actually prompt the user for their name. Um, and then whatever they type in, we'll use, we'll store in this variable and then use it. So right now it doesn't make as much sense, but trust me, in the next video it will. Um, the last thing I want to show you in this video is the idea of a template string. Okay. Um, I know you just learned the string concatenation, but I don't like it. <laughs> um, if you have a, a longer message or you've got to do a lot of concatenation, these plus signs are really annoying, right? You have to do this plus this plus this. So an easier way to do it is to use a backtick. And when you do a backtick, you can just build the string. And whenever you want to insert a variable, you do a dollar sign followed by a brace. I'm an open and closing brace. And uh, yeah, the curly brackets like that are, are braces. They're the above the square brackets. Um, so shift square bracket and stuff. Uh, and inside of here, we can insert a variable. So we'll insert username. And then after we insert the variable, we'll do our exclamation mark. Okay, so it makes it so I don't have to do here's a string plus another string plus another string. It's just one big string right inside of these these back ticks and you have to use back ticks for the template string you can't use double quotes or single quotes it has to be back ticks um, to the left of the number one above the tab okay that back ticks key um, and then this should uh, insert whatever that uh, the variable is whatever stored inside the variable into the string here okay so i'm gonna well you know let's learn something i'm gonna comment this line out okay you can do a, a double forward slash and that basically is, it's called a comment. It means just ignore this line of code. Um, comments can be used to, to ignore lines of code or they can be used for like your own notes, right? This is my learn about variables and strings, right? So this is my little title for the program. Um, and, and JavaScript will just ignore it. So right now, the only lines of code that will run are this, right? Let username be this. And then we're going to alert hello Mr. Velcamp, exclamation mark. And let's hope that works. Save it. Go back to here. And there's my hello, Mr. Velcamp. Just to make sure. Yes, there it is. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my notes quickly and just say template strings and comments, which is that, that double forward slash. 
Um, a shortcut to do comments um, is control and then a single forward slash. Control and forward slash. So if, I'm, if I, I don't even have to select the code, I can just have my cursor on this line and I hit control forward slash and it'll toggle commenting out the line. Okay, if I wanted to comment out everything, I could select everything, go control forward slash and it comments it all out. So if I save this now, my program does nothing. No variables, no alerts, right? Username is not defined because it's commented out, doesn't do anything. Control forward slash again, now it's going to say hello username twice. Hello Mr. Relcamp and hello Mr. Relcamp. Okay, awesome. All right, so yeah, variables store data. We're storing string data. We can join strings together with addition, template strings, and comments. Okay, I hope that made sense. Take care and see you in the next video.